Hey everybody, this is Matt with Option Omega. Thank you for checking out our deep dive video on how slippage works in the Option Omega backtester. There's a couple different ways people think about slippage, a couple different ways people might use slippage, and we wanted to just get in the weeds and show you exactly what each of the different slippages in the platform do, how they function so you can best use them. This is a really important way to customize back tests and make them do what you need them to do. So we've got a few types of slippage. We have entry slippage, exit slippage, and stop loss slippage. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a test with no slippage. So this is probably the most straightforward and most obvious slippage. What we have is a long debit trade with no slippage. And just a note, normally I would have a lot of miscellaneous conditions on. I've removed those all for the purposes of simplicity in this video. So this is just to demonstrate the slippage. So in a normal trade, if you do not have a stop loss, your choices are entry slippage and exit slippage. And I'm gonna put in $1 of entry slippage. So before we do that, our debit is 1065 for this call. We're gonna go down to miscellaneous and we're gonna add a dollar. So what will happen is the tester will add $1 to the debit. There it is, exactly like you would expect, 1165. This works in reverse for credit. So if you have a credit and you apply entry slippage, the entry will remove the credit amount that you specified in the slippage. So uh, here, I'll demonstrate that real quick. So let's take uh, that trade we just did. We're gonna turn this into a credit spread. So we will sell a more expensive call against it. If we leave off slippage, it is going to give us $2.50 credit. And if we put a dollar of slippage in there, it is going to change our credit amount by a dollar. And now we have a dollar 50. So that's how you can see how Entry slippage works with both a basic debit trade and a basic credit trade. Let's keep going. Okay, we're gonna talk just for a minute about our philosophy on slippage. And this is actually a live look at an SPX calendar. This is just a standard uh, 2-3 calendar that um, I have pulled up to see the price. This is in E-Trade, and I realize brokers look different. That's what this is. And we're just going to watch it for a second while I'm talking, and you can see how much a trade like this that has four legs jumps around. So there's a lot of different ways to do slippage. And at a high level, what we tried to do, and that's what this video is about, is kind of explain the thought process behind it. We wanted to mimic as much as we could the back tester simulating as a historical back tester, knowing that the future is always different. We wanted to make it behave in a way that made the most sense, was the most uh, authentic, felt the most real to us. So with a trade like this, it's a four leg trade. Now calendars, diagonals, iron condors, they all perform, you know, they all move around a little bit differently. And this one's not jumping around a crazy amount, but you can see even in just the minute that I've been talking here, the price that it pulled up as the mid price when we started is different than it is now. And it's, it's in the markets doing nothing. Like the market's literally not moving right now. It's, um, flat. And so we wanted to make the slippage behave in a way that, Again, as, as, as close as we could made it feel like an authentic experience. So for a trade like this, that's four legs. We think of slippage. We think of the trade. It, sometimes they don't have a mid price as much as a mid range. So if you watch this trade, I would say just in the time I've been talking, the mid range is probably between six and 620. Again, and the market has been doing nothing. So a back tester is a, is a historical thing and it's one moment in time. So just keep that in mind as you use uh, slippage in the back tester and as you think about how to use slippage. Okay, now we've talked a little bit about mindset and you've also seen the most common setups for entry slippage. There's one special case we want to hit on and that's the fixed premium entry slippage. In fixed premium entry slippage, what we want to do is again model 
uh, the closest thing that, that we think is realistic and kind of a true to life representation of how entry slippage would work if you're targeting a fixed amount. So let's look at this test and I'll explain it. We have no slippage on this and we targeted $10 on the test. And so this is going to get us uh, uh, the closest strike to $10 on that exploration. Now, what's going to happen? This is the 4185. Let's go into entry slippage and we're going to add $2 entry slippage. And you'll notice what happens is it doesn't change the price, it changes the strike as well. So now, so now what we're doing is we're looking at a different strike and a different price. It's farther out of the money so that it costs more. And what we did is we, we added the $2 of entry slippage. We saw what would get close to it. And then we essentially took it back away. So that's how entry slippage works. It's a nuanced thing, but you can see it's a, it's a very particular use case for fixed premium. And again, there's a couple different ways of doing this. We wanted to do something that would be as close to uh, kind of a real life experience as you could have. So that's how fixed premium works if you have a fixed premium and you're also using entry slippage. Okay, let's take a look at how exit slippage works. This is just a one leg test again. These exit conditions in miscellaneous are just set up to demonstrate how the slippage conditions work. All right, so I have a cap profits and we're taking $1 profit on this test and I'm going to put 50 cents of exit slippage on it. So what does it do? Does it give you 50 cents? No, it still gives you a dollar. Here's why. This is how exit slippage works for profit targets, timed exit, any other exit. This is how exit slippage works for the, this 50 cents. What the tester did is it looked to see that we got 50 cents past our profit target of $1. So we had to get to a dollar 50. If we got to a dollar 50, it closes us at a dollar. And again, this is our version of simulating how in real life this would function. If you're trading a complicated multi-leg trade, something like some sort of offset butterfly, something like a diagonal, something like a, a double calendar, a lot of times these trades will not close directly at the mid the second it hits the mid. You have a mid range. So in this case, exit slippage functions as getting past your profit target and making sure that gets hit and then it gets you out at the profit target. It's not just subtracting slippage from your profit target. We can show this. What we'll do is we will eliminate this exit slippage and let's do a dollar fifty profit target. Boom, there it is, dollar fifty profit target. So that is how exit slippage works. And I'll do another example showing you how it works exiting when you have a loss. Okay, let's look at exit slippage on a loss. So uh, what we're going to do here, again, I've got nothing on in here. And this test is only to show you I don't typically use cap losses. But it's very easy to demonstrate if we look at this trade, we lost $1, it's capping the losses. Okay, if we go down to slippage, and we use slippage, and we put in 50 cents, you can see that it adds 50 cents to the slippage on exit. That's how exit slippage works when you have a stop loss. Okay, the last type of the three slippages we have is stop loss slippage. This is a specialty slippage and let's talk about how it works. There's a tool tip explaining it. You have to enable a stop loss for this field to appear. And what this does is this will override your exit slippage in the case of a stop loss. So let's look at it. We have, again, I'm capping the losses here just to show you in the back tester how it exactly works. So we have a $1 loss here. If we add, if we add slippage and I put 20 cents exit slippage and 50 cents stop loss slippage, the 50 cents will override the 20 cents 
as you can see, we have a dollar fifty of stop loss slippage. So what is a common use case for this? A common use case for this is if you have a test where you want slippage to apply on the profit target, and then you want slippage to apply on the stop loss that's more severe, such as a zero day trade, a lot of people will have exit slippage requiring that the profit target or other exit condition applies. So they'll have exit slippage apply to that and more significant slippage apply in the case of a stop loss. So what's a use case for this? If you're doing a very low delta credit trade earlier in the day and you want to make sure that you're getting adequate consideration for a gamma or a delta move, you might have more severe stop loss slippage while also using exit slippage to make sure that your profit target got hit more conservatively. So again, you have to have the stop loss field enabled for stop loss slippage to show up. And in the case of a stop loss exit, when you have both exit slippage and stop loss slippage, the stop loss slippage overrides the exit slippage. Thanks for checking out this video on slippage on Option Omega. If you would like more information, you can jump on our Discord. The link is on our homepage, optionomega.com. If you're interested in trying the back tester, we have monthly and annual subscriptions available at optionomega.com. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day. Thanks.